What is up guys and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be installing a Shelby drop kit as well as a negative camber kit. If you guys don't want to spend thousands of dollars on tubular adjustable control arms but want those same handling benefits, I would recommend this kit for you. Um, I got this entire kit for $70. Let me show you what it comes with. Guys, this is the entire kit. As you can see here, this is gonna help us achieve that one inch Shelby drop. It was a Ford engineer that came up with this. Um, Ford didn't end up using it in any of their cars, but Shelby did. It drops the location of the control arm one inch. Um, these are the original bolt locations. We'll bolt this plate up and then we can drill our pilot holes with these. And that's essentially all it does is just lower the control arm one inch from its original mounting location. All right guys, these are the negative camber plates. They go between the control arm and the ball joint. In these stock setups, there's a lot of positive camber when going around corners, which often puts the tire out of contact with the road. And this, along with the one inch drop, is gonna correct that. So, so while cornering, it's gonna do a much better job of keeping the tire in contact with the road. So guys, like I said, this entire kit was $70 on CJ Pony Parts. I'll go ahead and leave that link in the description below if you wanna check that out. Let's get started with the install. Make sure to support the lower control arm with the jack. It'll also give you access to that rear shock bolt. Next, we'll go ahead and drop in the spring compressor, get that spring compressed and we'll be able to remove the upper control arm. upper control arm. Now we'll go ahead and unbolt the control arms from the shock tower. All right guys, we got the control arm out now. We go ahead and do the Shelby drop, and then we will remove these ball joints from the control arm. Uh, we do have to get rid of these rivets. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can use, um, say, a cutoff wheel and cut through them and then chisel them out. Uh, you could try to drill off the heads. Uh, a couple different ways you can go about doing that. Pilot holes started, I'll go ahead and remove this plate and we'll get them drilled out. ready to install our wedge as we drilled out the rivets of the ball joints and have those removed. Um, as you can see, there's only one way it's gonna fit. It will not fit that way. It's gonna go in place just like that, followed by our ball joint. 
And then I'm gonna run my hardware this way. Um, I don't want to risk any interference with the threads on the ball joint boot. So I'm gonna run them through this way. And then it also comes with two sets of washers. We have a normal flat washer. And then we have this machine washer that's on an angle there. Uh, hopefully the camera can pick that up. Maybe just a little bit, let's see. There you go. Anyway, that's designed um, to ride at the top of the control arm. So you can see it's on an angle. It's not gonna come through flat, so that washer will ensure that everything is snug and you don't have like a uh, bolt cocked one way or the other. Let's go ahead and tighten this up, get it installed so we get it back in the car. Alright guys, as you can see this angle here, we're going to run the, the machined washer thin side towards this edge. That's going to help us get a solid, tight connection. As we're tightening it down, we're gonna have to watch that just to make sure that washer doesn't move on us. Came with nylon blocking nuts. Now it's ready to install back on the car. All right guys, a little tip when you're installing any type of ball joints, um, even tie rod in, anything that requires a cotter pin, um, if you index the joint to an easier spot for you to stick that cotter pin in. It's just gonna help out so much more. Um, say rather than having it going this way where you have the spindle in the way. Um, so before installing this joint, I orientated uh, the hole in the joint this way and I won't be wasting time trying to fit it this way and bend it out and a mess of um, with the spindle in the way. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get the sprint in, followed by the shock. All right guys, when installing that coil spring again, we're gonna make sure that uh, the end of the coil spring meets up with this tab on the coil spring perch. And then up above, um, again, we have our insulator on. So I went ahead and jacked it up into place. Got my jack underneath the lower control arm. And then I'll go ahead and release this compressor and we'll get installed in the shop. All right, for the 
bottom of the shock, we're gonna have our rubber bushing, flat washer, lock washer, and then nut. I also like to put a little bushing grease, helps it hold it in place and also keeps down on noise. Now we'll go ahead and put on that top mount. Complete installation. You can see we got our wedge kit bolted up in between the ball joint and the control arm. If you look inside, we got that one inch Shelby drop all taken care of. Everything installed, ready to go. We just have to rinse and repeat and take care of that other side. All right guys, we got the other side all buttoned up as well, so that's a complete for this installation. We have now improved the handling on this Mustang greatly uh, for truly not a lot of work and not a lot of money either. So if you're looking to reap those benefits, go ahead and install this kit. And with all that being said guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys all take care and I'll see you next time.